And so at this point, I, on this fake account here, I'm not going to be able to show you the verification like I did for you individually. But let's say I, I verified it just like you've, you've uh, done it. And you want to click on, uh, you, you should see the, the word search console near the top left. Go ahead and click that just to go to the main menu. Because I'll show you in a moment when I log into my real account, I can manage a variety of websites from this account. Me, that I've said before that I teach, <coughs> as well as I'm part of a company where we do this for real clients. On my screen, I'll show you, we've got like, you know, 10 clients here. And we can manage all of that. And I can set this to let other people within the company, or also the owner of the company, uh, to see and work with this data. So it's not that everyone in the future needs to log in with my information. They can log in with their own Google credentials, their own Gmail and such, and they will have access to this. I'll show you how to grant other people access in a moment. But the point of the Search Console is for it to keep track of all of this data uh, that Google accumulates on your site. But it's not going to keep it track of any data until you set it up. So it's not going to go back and tell you what happened last month if you just set it up now. And as I said earlier, well, our site, some people are going to type victor.com, and some people are going to type www.victor.com. So since we managed to verify this version right now, I can probably also take a moment to verify the other version. So click Add Property on the top right. And it says add your property. So a moment ago we did HTTP. Now we'll do the HTTP colon slash slash www version. So it is a good idea to set both versions up because you will get different different reports. On a technical level, these are two different websites. Google sees one version without WW and one version with, and therefore it's going to keep different track of different data. Yes? Even though the, the user is, pulls up the same website, even though they, one user uses one website and the other, another user uses another website, it takes them to the same website. Well, one user used one address, and the other user used a different address. And yes, those two addresses went to one site. That's true. But Google, the search engine, sees traffic coming from two sources. Just like if I want to get to City Hall, there's more than one way to get there. You get to City Hall, but you take different streets. So Google can give us our traffic reports for both driving directions. Yes? So when you're putting the meditary into your site, do you, how do you separate the meditary? Is it showing other meditary as well? You, you, can just, uh, you should just be able to press Enter to give yourself a new line. Okay. And then on the next line, add the other meta tag. Uh, let me double check what you're looking at because no, there should not be any commas. So the odd thing with this is okay. I'm going to add, I've added the non-WW version, and I want to add the WW version, and it's going to act like it's a completely new site. So it's going to say again, okay, verify, choose a method, just click verify. We've already verified once. That's the funny thing. We've already, already verified once, and so you should just be able to verify, and it'll accept it. Yes. Did you have to actually set that up in your domain as well? Like both um, both addresses using the www one and then the red one? Oh, uh, that no. You don't have to set that up with your domain provider. They kind of do this already automatically. Okay. In the old days, you know, ten years ago and such, then you did have to go in and set up uh, the the www version and the non www version that went to the same place. But nowadays, that's such a basic thing, you don't even have to worry about that. What we have to worry about is at this point with Google Search Console. But internally on the server, we don't have to worry about that. 
And so those are the two versions of my site, and I want to track the data on both of those versions because people might um, people might visit that website in either of those ways. And I did say there was that other one as well. How many of you have SSL on your website? No one. So you don't have to worry about this. But remember I said, if I've got the secure connection on my website, if I purchase the SSL, this is not a free thing, this is an add-on to buying your domain name, then you have HTTPS colon slash slash victor.com and HTTPS colon slash slash www.victor.com. So I would add those two versions as well. That's going to track other data. So this will give us the most complete picture if I've got all four of those. I don't have the HTTPS, so I won't do it. Most of us have the these two, the WW version and the non-W. Now, I might not be able to get it to show up here. So I'll show it in a different way. Um, click on, on Search Console again, even if you're already there. Just click on it again. Um, does anyone get a pop-up here that says All Messages and maybe a number one or number two or something? Okay. So I can't quite show it, but um, I think I can show it on my other account. But what it's if you click on Messages, this is what I'm. This is what Google said previously about setting this up. Will will let us help you get site to your tra uh, get traffic to your site so if you click on all messages you should then have sort of like an inbox that comes only from Google that tells you um, probably one about choose your preferred domain name is that one of the ones that shows up so now improve the search presence. what's that improve the, search. improve the search presence okay it's on the next one click on improve improve search presence now does it say a list of like bullet points kind of and one of them says choose your domain. So let me uh, let me log into my other account here so I can show you that a little bit more correctly. It's better to show you what I'm talking about than, than guess. Here we go. So uh, I'll show you clients stuff in a moment, but I've got two messages here. And notice then lots of messages because I've set this up for a lot of clients. So you're uh, you're probably getting improved the search presence of your site, and you probably will get a version of that message for both. So we will do both. I'm going to start with the if you've got that inbox and uh, it's showing that for both. WW version and non W. Click on the non W version first. <clears throat> and here's a bunch of things. Um, so the number one, add your add your website versions. Make sure you've added the WW version and the non WW. Also add the HTTPS version. So okay, once I've already done those, but once I get SSL, I could add that. So okay, one is done. Select your preferred version, we'll do that in a moment. Select target country, we'll do that. Share access with coworkers, submit a sitemap, learn how to work with Search Console. So this is a very good tutorial that comes from Google themselves about what you should do. So we'll do number two here, which is choose whether you want your site to appear with or without WW in Google Search. So on number two, click set preferred version. It says preferred version. Don't set a preferred. Display the WW version or display the non-W. Um, this doesn't <coughs> matter. It does not matter which one you choose. I have a preference though. I prefer to use the non-W version. Um, so whenever, well, the point of this is when someone searches and your website shows up on a Google search, do you want your address to show up on Google search with www or not www and I'm gonna say I prefer the non-w version because it's no longer 1998 
we don't need to be typing www blah 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 anymore. It's automatic. And yes, millions of people still type www. But in this modern age, you don't need to type www anymore. Plus, it's not as aesthetically pleasing, and it takes up more space. I really hate it when I see people's business cards, or I see their billboards, or I see, I see their flyers, and it says, visit us at www.google.com. I know that it's WW. Everyone knows that. Okay, everyone doesn't know it. But the non-W version is the modern version that if you don't want to look like you've got an old website from 1998, don't put WWW on your business cards anymore. It's assumed now. You're going to look out of it if you keep putting WWW on everything. It just works now. People still ask me, go to victor.com. Do I type www? Doesn't matter, but no. So I'm going to recommend select the non w version. On this crawl rate, just leave the default, which should be uh, let Google optimize for my site. What that is about is that Google will check on your site periodically. It will crawl your site. It'll follow your links, and you know it's going to send their little their little robo spider to crawl your website. And that means it's going to use a little bit of the resources of your website, just like normal traffic. So, however, if you want to limit when the days and the times and all of that when Google crawls your site, you can set that, but the recommended is to leave it alone unless you know what you're doing. And I would recommend leave it alone. The crawl rate as it is here should work fine. So if you changed the preferred domain, like I said, you should click Save. It was one of the items on our checklist. Click back on Messages. And open the same the same message. We'll do the www version in a moment. Go back to improve the search of the non-w version because we've got number one done, we've got number two done, number three, select target country. Set your geographic, your geographic preference if your site targets users in a specific country. So let's look at that screen. Number three, choose a country. You may get the option a drop-down box that says choose a country or it may not show that yet because it hasn't finished processing your site. So if it does let you choose a country and you want to target a specific country you should do that. So if I've got a website and I'm going to be targeting Canada I'm going to be selling things, importing things to Canada, it would behoove me to change that in Google. To, for Google to help me, for my traffic to show up more on people searching from Canada. Um, language or country, that is. See that? So if I'm also selling in, to, to Mexico, I want my site to be targeted to Spanish speakers. So as it processes my site, I might then be able to select the target language is Spanish or um, Italian or, or whatever. And if I'm targeting my site, the default is US, United States. If I'm targeting other countries, I have the ability there to change it. I'm going to target Venezuela. Save. So then Google will help my search engine be found more to Velezuanos, Velezuanistas. What do you what do you call them? Those of Venezuela. Um, so if you make any change, then remember to save that. And that's up to you. I'm not giving you a right or wrong answer or an opinion. It's up to you. Who are you targeting your, your website to? The default is US, so probably that's right. If you do need to target it to other countries, you can. Unfortunately, no. So I would target your largest demographic. Then is there a way to untarget? So I'd say the US for now, but when you go to international waivers, they will pull only US out, or is this just saying primarily US targeting? That's so a good point. Sort of 
it'll still show up everywhere. Even if you chose Vatican City, it's going to show up everywhere, but it's going to target it to that, to that country. Uh, and if you do want to target globally, there is no global, but we're based in the U.S., so perhaps U.S. There is unlisted, but I'm not exactly sure if that'll give you the best results. So I would keep it United States, even if you're global. Let's go back to Messages. And we'll look at that message one more time. What's next? Share access with coworkers. This helps Google better understand how to crawl your site. Let's, uh, let's look at that. Manage site users. So at the moment, I'm the only one that has access to this. I set this up with my Google account. Only I can log in with my password. I could give my password to everyone in the company. But wait a minute, that's tied to my Gmail and my personal Google Plus and everything. So a better thing is add new user. So if you've got other people that you want to give access to, other people in your marketing company, other people in your web design company, the owner of the business, the investors of the owner of the business, you add their email addresses here. What kind of permission can they have? And it tells you either full or restricted and what the difference is. Uh, restricted will let your whoever you designate here manage most of this, except the, the deep stuff such as adding and removing uh, more users and deleting all the data and such. So if it's on full, you have full access. If it's unrestricted, it's still a lot of access, but not that stuff to cause damage. Because if you set full access to other people, let's say someone else in your company, and then suddenly that person got fired under bad circumstances and they still have access to this, worst case scenario is they log in and they remove you from access, and then they move to Hawaii. So be careful about giving full access to people. Password that's for each user email. They will have their own password for their own email. So they will need to set up. If I've got John at gmail.com, it's going to be their Gmail. It's going to be their credentials to log in. I don't know it and I don't have access to it. So a lot of you might not need to do this, but if you need to do this, we saw where that was. It's in that um, email. And also it's kind of hidden inside of this little gear, which we'll come back later, but uh, I'm going to go back to messages and see what else is on my to-do list. Submit a site map file. This helps Google better understand how to crawl your site. So I say this all the time, especially in the SEO class, this metaphor. If you uh, visit a brand new town and you go to the local mall and you want to find a specific um, store, some of you will wander the mall and then find the store and go in. Some of you will go straight to the directory of the mall, find that store and go directly to that store. <coughs> So that's the same sort of thing here. Google will spend some time wandering around your site trying to discover every link, every graphic, everything on your site. Or we can give it a directory of every link on our site. And if we help Google that way, it will help us in traffic. So this is what a sitemap is. It's a, link, it's a list of every link and picture and such on your site. The big downside with this is that it is not a file that you're going to create yourself. You're not going to open Word, you're not going to open Microsoft Word and just type a list of all of your pages. A sitemap is a very specific and technical document that even I myself don't bother creating manually. My software, my web design software will create it for me. I can create a sitemap very easily in WordPress and Wix and all of that. So I'm not going to show how to create one. You need to look up how to create sitemap in, in WordPress, in Squarespace, etc. There's going to be help for you. 
Um, I won't be able to show you. I can obviously show you individually during lab time and such, but as far as this here, I can't show you the whole process. But you want to create a sitemap, <coughs> submit it to Google, and then that, that'll be good for you, because Google will then catalog everything on your site, and when someone searches, Google will say, wait a minute, this is a website, this is a website with that that the person is looking for. Let me show them that website, your website. So here's an example of one that's been already set up. Google has gone in and analyzed the site and seen the different files and images and links and everything and it's uh, showing everything that it knows about our site and that's what I want. I want it to know and there, that there's no errors and, and everything. So this is something that you'll need to do at some point. It is a little technical because again it's not a plain old file that you write. It's going to be a file made out of code. And I myself wouldn't do this either because it's not just a list. It has to show when was the page updated, what is it linked to, when is it changed, all of that complicated stuff. I don't do this myself. So yes? Question about the site map. So say you submit a site map and then you make significant changes to the site like in a couple of weeks' time. Mm -hmm. Then do you resubmit a new site map? If you've got a kind of a website software like the modern ones like Wix and Dream and WordPress and such, they automatically update themselves and they automatically submit themselves to Google. So um, you'll have to check your software if it does that or not. If it doesn't, then if you do make those significant changes, you want to update your sitemap and then resubmit it. Most likely your software will already update it and submit it for you. And then this last one, you'll, you'll have your own time to look at it, number six, because this is a two-week class. I can spend all the time just looking at this, even if it was a four-week class. There's so much to learn about all of this stuff. So there it is, number six. Learn how to work with Search Console. Everything about it documented. This is the manual for it. It's everything here into various sections which um, what this class and my other class is about is a condensation of it but you should still read it on your own and also um, here we've got um, some items at the bottom such as ask questions in our forum so there's a there's a forum where you can ask questions and you'll get an answer eventually but I'll show you another way to get much more direct answers from Google we can call them actually and, and I have called Google and they do answer your question it's not that obvious how to do it but I'm going to show you because this is our advanced Google class. So at this point, um, at this point, then we've got we've set some of the settings for the non WW version of the site. We would need to do the same thing for the other version. So if you go back to Search Console, top left and then messages. It's kind of odd here. When we're looking at this one website, we have messages only about this website. But when we go back to the search console, the top level, then I get messages for all my websites. So back to the search console, click on all messages, and then I can go through the process of improving the search presence for the WW version. And on that one, I would also set it when it says preferred domain, set it to the non-WW version. So basically that's why we set up the non-WW version for first because we're going to use those settings and apply them to the WWW version. So what we'll do is we'll take our first break just to make sure everything is all set up. If you need any help we'll catch you up. We'll take our first break when we come back and we'll talk about setting up um, the, um, the Google uh, Analytics no, actually, when, after we come back with our break, then I'll show you what did we set up here. Then we'll set up Google Analytics and look at that. So we'll take a 10-minute break. It's uh, 7.18. We'll, uh, 7.08. We'll be back at 7.18. We'll go on.